Get three coffins ready. Uh -huh. You see, my mule don't like people laughing. It's the crazy idea you're laughing at him. Now, if you apologize like I know you're going to, I might convince him that you really didn't mean it. partner time for a showdown you want to click on some bugs well there's <coughs> there's one gun that might be the clicking on buggiest of them all the bulldog is a gun that is normally pretty biased towards shooting weak points and that's why it has a high innate weak point multiplier that gets very high with a mod at base it's reasonably accurate but it can become very accurate if you build for it Bulldog's base spread is 1.5, both vertically and horizontally, which is actually the same as Sabata, and the maximum spread is 8. By the way, if you want to convert the game's internal spread values to regular degrees, just divide them by 2. Normally, when walking, jumping, or on a zipline, Bulldog's minimum spread increases by another 1.5, and by 4 when sprinting, more than double the increase. Shooting also increases spread by 7, and you recover from this at a rate of 6 per second. As a result, it normally takes a little over 1 second to recover fully from a shot. Since you can fire 2 shots per second, if you fire repeatedly, every shot past the first will have spread increased from 1.5 to 5. There's three different mods that affect these values. Tier 1B decreases base spread down from 1.5 to 0.45, which is so small it might as well not exist. Tier 2B decreases spread per shot from 7 to 1.4, low enough that you will recover from it well before the next shot, and also reduces recoil down to one-fourth of what it normally is. And finally, Tier 5A completely removes the movement penalties on your aim. The mods that these all compete with are significant. In particular, Tier 2 has damage and ammo mods, while Tier 5's Neurotoxin is more or less free damage. And you can play around the base inaccuracy of the gun without a lot of trouble. In practice, it's not as bad as it may originally seem. However, having near-perfect accuracy on a gun that loves hitting weak points is also obviously useful, and if you're popping normal targets quickly, Poison damage over time isn't really that beneficial. For typical bulldog builds that want to click on weak points, I would recommend taking Deadeye over Neurotoxin. There are exceptions to that, but we'll get there in a bit. If you use Born Ready, or just don't find yourself getting caught out reloading bulldog in general, taking the increased accuracy in tier 1 makes sense as well. Although it should be said that it doesn't matter a ton when you're not shooting things at long range. Floating Barrel is the trickier one. This lets you either shoot multiple targets faster, or drill into a weak point on a target like a Menace or Warden more effectively. But it's going up against a Damage and Ammo mod, so the value of this really depends on your playstyle. You're giving something else up by taking this no matter what. The Bulldog starts out at a really convenient damage breakpoint. With the weak point mod, 60 damage is enough to one-shot Mactera spawn and acid spitters, two-shot tri draws, and body shot web spitters. And you can one-shot slashers and two-shot guards. Also, Bulldog innately has a 50% chance to stun for 1.5 seconds, which isn't affected by anything. In general, I wouldn't normally recommend taking damage ups on Bulldog. If you want to body shot grunts for a blowthrough build, taking a damage up will let you do that in two shots. But normally you don't really want to do this. This is a weapon that is typically good for popping annoying targets at range or unloading into something beefy. 
not clearing grunts. So, without overclocks, I would recommend using something like this. Though, whether you take floating barrel or ammo in tier 2 will depend a lot on playstyle. Most of the time you'll want to switch weapons and let Born Ready reload it, so tier 1B is probably what you want, and the weak point mod in tier 3 is normally kind of a no-brainer. It lets you hit significant breakpoints while still taking ammo, and you get to do a lot more damage to tanky enemies. The other mods in that tier are Swarm Clearing mods, Super Blow Through for 3 penetrations, and Explosive Rounds, which cuts your damage in half in exchange for a flat 30 explosive damage in a 1.5 meter radius. It does inflict Neurotoxin at the normal 50% chance within that radius if you take tier 5B, and some enemies are weak to explosive damage, but you still lose immediate damage against them because they all have very good weak points, which that doesn't benefit from. To put it simply, under most circumstances, neither of these are as valuable as a big weak point damage boost. Trash should normally be cleared with gunners' primaries and grenades. But when might you actually want to run those other two mods? The first overclock I'm going to cover is Chain Hit, and it's one that you might want to use those mods with, and one of them has a very weird interaction. With this, each time you shoot a weak point, there is a 75% chance that the shot ricochets, aiming itself towards any other enemy within 5 meters and also damaging them. The way that this interacts with explosive rounds is pretty simple. Your shot explodes once when it hits the target, and then explodes again wherever it lands after the ricochet. This is a nice way to get not only some extra damage, but more chances to inflict neurotoxin on enemies. The 50% chance Neurotoxin has of working can be inconsistent, so getting two explosions helps quite a bit in spreading it around through crowds. Blow through rounds, on the other hand, is strange. Whenever you shoot a weak point with chain hit, you've got a 75% chance of a ricochet. This is only rolled once per shot. Either the shot will ricochet on the first weak point it hits, or it won't ricochet on anything. As a result, when you shoot multiple targets with blowthrough, you will never see a shot ricochet off any targets in the bullet's original path besides the first one it collides with. It's either the first enemy in the line, or none of them. When it does bounce, something strange happens. The shot essentially gets split into two bullets. The first is the ricochet path, it's visible and follows the normal ricochet behavior. The second is the blowthrough path, following the original path of the bullet. Unlike the ricochet path, it's invisible with no visual tracer, but it still does damage as usual. An enemy behind the first target can get hit by both the blowthrough and the ricochet paths for extra damage. Again, a blowthrough shot that ricochets basically gets split into two bullets, a blowthrough bullet and a ricochet bullet. There's nothing preventing them from both hitting the same target. So in situations where you have two enemies lined up, if they're close enough, you can hit the first target once and the second target twice with one shot. This is all pretty janky, but regardless of the weird behavior, you've got a 75% chance of an extra hit on top of the normal blowthrough behavior, as long as there's another enemy within 5 meters. The way I see it, you've got three different ways to build chain hit. One, run it like a mostly normal bulldog that can also get a bit more value from weak point shots. Two, take explosive rounds to set off multiple explosions and clear grunts with it. And three, take blow through and get some extra hits with that janky interaction. The explosive round setup is probably usually the best of these, but there's something to be said for all of them. Next is Magic Bullets. This overclock gives a large minus 20 damage penalty, and in exchange gives your shots a 100% chance to ricochet off terrain towards enemies within 5 meters. They'll also ricochet off weak points like chain hit, which is probably a bug and additionally it gives plus 8 ammo. Since it's another ricochet overclock, 
Besides bouncing off terrain, all the interactions work the same as Chainhead, which is to say, weirdly. The damage down means that running this like a normal Bulldog isn't really practical, so it's less flexible than Chainhead. However, it's much stronger than Chainhead in the niche of Swarm Clearing. With poison explosive rounds, you can shoot the ground near bugs to cause two small explosions. Which is also how chain hit ricochets work, but here you don't have to aim for weak points. You can just point in the general direction of groups of bugs and shoot, and neurotoxin will sort it out. Explosive rounds and neurotoxin are both required, and you have no good reason to take accuracy mods or damage on this, so there's basically just one smart way to build magic bullets, and it's this. Magic bullets and grenades are basically all you need to handle Swarm's weak enemies, so your primary can be devoted to single target damage. Speaking of single target damage, it's time to put aside the crowd control and just hit things hard. Six Shooter does mostly what you'd expect. Increase your number of rounds to six like a proper cowboy, as well as doubling your rate of fire and giving you a little more max ammo. As a penalty, you've got plus 0.5 reload time and 50% more base spread. I already prefer accuracy mods on most Bulldog builds, but that especially goes here. And especially if you plan on taking advantage of that fire rate to mulch bugs at range. If you only care about unloading into Praetorians and such at close range, feel free to skip Floating Barrel, but I always take it with Six Shooter. You get more value from it with a higher rate of fire, and the overclock effectively gives you plus 8 ammo between the bonus 6 ammo and the bigger cylinder, which offsets not taking the plus 12 ammo on. Six shooters burst damage is quite high, and just having more shots to fire is nice on this gun, so this is a good general use overclock. Some people have the impression that firing faster means worse ammo economy, but that's not really true. Your shots are still doing the same amount of damage, you're just enabled to spend them faster, but you don't have to. If you find yourself running dry on ammo too quickly, that doesn't mean that the overclock is not ammo efficient, it means your playstyle isn't ammo efficient. Same thing goes for many NG builds. You hear complaints about how NG isn't ammo efficient, but in reality he has a lot of total damage. It's just that he's also capable of dumping it really quickly if he wants to. So, you just need to not blow your load as soon as you get into a fight. Just two of them. One for each. that you know and they ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine and you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Bulldog's homebrew powder is a bit unusual. Compared to other homebrew mods and overclocks, the effect is much larger. It ranges from 75% damage to 200% damage, 137.5% on average. While the swinginess may seem dangerous, in practice homebrew feels quite good here. Low rolls might make you miss a kill now and again, but it's a substantial boost on average, and smoking things with a high roll feels great. This is, in my opinion, the most impactful homebrew effect in the game, and you can comfortably run it on a typical bulldog build. So. Being able to randomly roll up to 200% damage is pretty good, right? 
but what if you could get that sort of damage boost consistently? And hey, why stop at 200%? Why not go higher? Let's just do 400% damage with no RNG involved. Surely that wouldn't present any balance issues, right? It's fine to be able to do this much damage. It's not a problem at all. I'm not drunk, you're drunk. Okay, so let's be real here. Volatile Bullets is fun, because combos are fun, fire is fun, and it does a lot of damage. But it's pretty overpowered. In exchange for a minus 10 damage penalty, Bulldog's Volatile Bullets adds fire damage to your shots equal to 300% of your base damage whenever you hit a burning enemy. And also an equal amount of heat. So the burning enemy's heat gets maxed out with every shot and it'll stay burning. Since the extra damage is fire damage, it's subject to enemy resists. The only one that's really relevant though is Oppressor's 66% fire resist, and you're effectively doing plus 100% damage to them instead of plus 300%, which is still very good. And then, some enemies take more damage from fire. Like Mactera. And Spitballers. This overclock is obviously best with a build that lights things on fire, whether that's Burning Hell Minigun or Napalm Hurricane. But your teammates lighting things on fire is helpful as well. There's a lot of options for other classes to ignite things, so you will pretty frequently get that advantage. Teammates freezing things is sort of an anti-synergy, but it's not really hard to play around. The only thing to say about building Volatile Bullets is that you should take one damage up to offset the damage penalty and get back to the normal good 60 damage breakpoint on Bulldog for killing things like Mactera. That way you're not restricted to just killing big things well. It's flexible, it kills really fast, and it's insanely ammo efficient. I almost feel bad about using it sometimes, but it is also fun. Lastly, we've got elephant rounds. If you ever wanted your big iron to be bigger, here you go. The penalties are minus one rounds loaded. Minus 12 max ammo, plus 0.5 reload time, plus 71% spread per shot, and plus 50% recoil and max spread. In exchange for all of that, times 2 damage and 50% base spread. That's a lot of downside, but dealing double damage is a pretty big upside. You can even improve your ammo economy despite the ammo penalty, provided you're hitting stuff that's tanky. That's kind of what makes this overclock awkward, though. You do so much damage per shot that you're massively overkilling a lot of the stuff Bulldog is normally good against. If you just want to shoot tanky bugs, that's not a problem, but normally Bulldog is a lot more flexible than that. The other issue is that the massive recoil and bloom makes it really slow to use in many situations. You can take Floating Barrel to mitigate this somewhat, but usually I get around this by just taking out the Bulldog, firing one shot, and then switching back again to sidestep the issue. It has started raining. Goodbye audio quality. Well, anyway, in general, I think this thing is worse than Six Shooter and Homebrew, but I can't bring myself to dislike it.